everyone, Eugene Federowski from eugenefederowski.com. I hope you guys are having an amazing day so far. I hope you're crushing it in your network marketing business. And today I have a question for you. Is there anything that we can learn and apply into our network marketing business from the way Disney World runs their business? Stay tuned for my take on the subject. Now, you probably have a puzzled look on your face, like, what does Disney World have anything to do with the network marketing business? Well, let me tell you. So, when I was booking the parks, uh, I found out that the parks have went up in price again, and as they do once to twice a year. Now, typically, when a company raises prices, the customers pull back, and the customers stop don't buy as much or they stop buying at all or they c control the supply that way so uh, they c control the supply and the demand in the way of pricing so they usually company increases price demand goes down a bit a lot depends in Disney's case even though they're increasing their prices every single year d the demand almost doesn't go down I would say demand is probably up so that's the goal and to say that in, in network marketing, we tend to forget that we hold the key to other people's success. And we are the ones that are sought. It's not about the prospects, it's about us. There's a lot more of prospects, meaning people with problems, than there are of us problem solvers. So we need to constantly remember that, that when we're approaching someone, we're the ones who have the goods. It doesn't matter if that person is successful. It doesn't matter if that person is a real estate a realtor who makes a lot of money. It doesn't matter if they know a lot of people. Just remember, we can help them and they need us more than we need them. Yes, we do need people in this business, but we never need one person, one specific person. So that's one of the things I learned from Disney. And I observed that actually there's something called a Christmas party and that happens two to three times a week between 7 p.m. and 12 a.m. And this is in addition to the regular pack entrance to the park. So the entrance to the park is like $100 a day or something like that. On top of that, Disney's charging another $105 for the ability to use their parks for an extra five hours. And there's some things like free cookies, free cocoa, and whatever they throw in there, some fireworks. So my wife and I bought it, and I expected there were gonna be less people. Because think about it, you're paying $100 for the park, plus another $100 on top, and yet there were about 10,000 people, I would estimate, in that park on one night. And I was like, so they charge extra, and they're still getting people. So, how do we translate it to network marketing? That w whenever we hear prospects say, oh, it's too expensive, I can't afford it. That's not a real objection most of the time. What they really say is they don't see the value. People see the value in Disney World. They see the reason why they should be ponying up all that kind of money. And some people, it might be their last money. So, but yet they're still doing it. $100 for the park, $100 for the Christmas party, lots of money on food, things of that nature. And here we are in network marketing, somebody asks us or tells us, oh, that's too expensive. We run and we hide and we don't know what else to tell them. Posture up, realize that whatever your product is or whatever your service is, as long as it brings value to the customer or to a person, then it's worth it. And it's our job to figure out whether the objection that the prospect is throwing us is real or not. Now, typically, if somebody tells me that, oh, it's too expensive, I can't afford it, I ask them two questions. The first one is, I ask them, are you looking for a way in or are you looking for a way out? I learned that from Cesar Rodriguez. And if they tell me, oh, yeah, I'm looking for a way in, which means that they're looking for a way into the business as opposed to out of the business, or sometimes they'll ask, well, what do you mean? 
And then I explained to them that, well, are you looking to join and a way into the business or are you looking for an escape and looking for a way out of the business? And I usually follow up with that by saying, because I'm okay if you don't want to join the business, I'm perfectly fine with that, just tell me no. So after that, they, most of the time they tell me, yeah, I'm actually looking for a way in. So then I tell them, so let me get this straight. So between all your bank accounts, all your credit cards, all your cash that you may have saved, you don't have the money that it takes to join the company. And that could be $500, it could be $300, it could be $1,500, whatever your package to start the business is, you insert that money. And they usually tell me, yeah, I don't, I don't have that. So then I ask them, okay, no problem. Let me ask you this. How far away are you? And then what, what that does is instead of battling the 500, the 1,000, the 1,500, you're battling only how much they're missing. And so let's say the package is $500 and they say, well, I got 300. Okay, cool. So how can we come up with the 200 that you need? And let them answer. Let them think about how they can come up with the money. If they really can't figure out, give them some ideas. They can take something to a pawn shop. I've heard of people pointing guitars, televisions, bicycles, anything that could bring them quick money so they can join. Now that's a real person who's looking for a way in, if they're willing to put something on the line. And that's the kind of person that's probably gonna succeed in the business. They can also, if they're $200 away, they can borrow $10 from 20 people, or $20 from 10 people, or $50 from four people. So something along those lines. So my point of this whole video is, is that we can learn from Disney World we need to realize what we have is valuable. It's worth every penny that our company charges for it. And we shouldn't cower, we shouldn't be scared. And if we show the kind of posture that other successful business people do, like lawyers, doctors, Disney World, if we show that kind of posture to our prospects, then we'll be more better in our profession and we'll, we'll get the results we're looking for. Because a lot of times what I've noticed is if we stammer and we cower at whatever they throw at us and they want to make us dance and then we give them posture answers, that throws them off. Because they expect, as they're usually the experience from other network marketers, is we, they expect us to bend to their rules. But if you have posture, you won't have to bend to their rules. So. I hope you guys found this useful. In the next few days, I'll be sharing a lot more things that I earned over the past two weeks, as well as from the three days that I spent with Ray and the Masterminders and one day at his training event on Saturday. Uh, if you found this useful, please like, comment, and share. If you have an idea that you want me to cover on a Facebook Live, reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to implement that into one of the future videos. And I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Take care.